Pasi, officially the city of Pasi, Kinaraya, Sayadad Kong Pasi, Sayadad Ka Pasi, Hiligaynon, Dokbon Wasang Pasi, Filipino, Lungsod ng Pasi, and often referred to as Pasi City, is a fourth-class city in the province of Iloilo, Philippines. According to the 2015 census, it has a population of 80,544 people, it has a total land area of 25,139 hectares 62,120 acres, making up 5.39% of the provincial land area of Iloilo. Its relatively flat land stretches alongside the Jalor and Lamunan rivers. Mountainous areas are found along the northern part of the city. Pasi is a rice, pineapple, and sugar-rich area and the only component city and the largest in the province of Iloilo in terms of land area and income and second in population after autumn. It is popularly known with its slogan, The Sweet City at the Heart of Panay, due to its vast pineapple plantations and annual output in fruit production. Geography the city of Pasi is situated on the heart of Panay and can be reached via the new Iloilo Capiz Highway which starts from Iloilo City up to Roxas City, and goes all the way to Calibo and Cataclan Jetty Port at Malay, Aklan. It is 50 kilometers 31 miles from Iloilo City and 66 kilometers 41 miles from Roxas City. The city of Pasi is clockwise surrounded by Dumarao in the north, San Rafael in the east, San Enrique in the southeast, Dueñas in the south, Kalinog in the west and Bingawan in the northwest. Climate Pasi, like most of the Iloilo's inland towns, belong to the third type climate region which has no pronounced maximum rain period and no distinct dry and wet season while it is not within typhoon belt, but it has its own share of typhoons that visits the province of Iloilo occasionally. Rivers and mountains the city is traversed by five major rivers namely, 1, Jalor River 2, Lamunan River 3, Hinayan River 4, Asisig River and 5, Maliao River. It also has creeks and tributaries which can be tapped for irrigation purposes. It is relatively dominated by rolling hills and narrow valley plain. It is bordered by two mountains namely Mount Kanyapasan and Mount Bayoso. Political subdivisions Pasi City is politically subdivided into 51 barangays, 38 rural barangays, 11 urban barangays, and two city proper barangays, which are grouped into four geographical districts. Barangays Poblacion Ilawad and Alea are the highly urbanized barangays of the city because the two compose the city proper area of Pasi. Majority of the downtown area is occupied by Poblacion Ilawad. Dorilo Street divides the whole city proper area into two barangays, the western portion occupied by Poblacion Alea, and the eastern part occupied by Poblacion Ilawad. Barangay Poblacion Ilawad was the political center of Pasi when it was a municipality, however, the new city hall and the government center were transferred to Brigi. Sablagan when Pasi was proclaimed as a city in 1998. The city of Pasi belongs to the 4th district of Iloilo. Listed below are the respective population of each barangay as of 2010. History Although its young distinction as a city, Pasi is considered to be one of the oldest Spanish settlements in Iloilo. It was organized as a pueblo community settlement of natives in 1766 with Don Martin Salagumba as its first leader. But the place has actually been settled by three Malay brothers named Dig on Tokiab and Umawang long before the arrival of the Spaniards. Their first formal community was located on the site presently occupied by the Roman Catholic Church. According to popular legend, Spanish conquistadors stumbled on a small hut by the river's bank where an old woman was fond winnowing pounded rice. One of them asked her, Como se llama este lugar, not knowing the native language of course. Much to the old woman's surprise and perhaps excitement, she replied without much ado, ah, posse, which means some of the unhusked rice on her basket. She must have thought that they were eager to know what was in the basket and what she was doing, because she could not understand their language. From that time on, the Spanish began to call the place posse at first until it later evolved into posse. 
Such legends about name origins are common throughout towns and cities in the Philippines, the core plot being a Spaniard asking the non-Spanish speaking natives what the name of the place is and the latter responding in what would end up eventually as the name of the place. It is said that the first Spanish settlement was established in the area in 1766, marking the onset of Spanish colonial rule. In the traditional story, Spanish explorers anchored in Ansig, a place located at the mouth of Lamunan River. The founding of the present Poblacion of Pasi was attributed to Don Martin Salagumba. His notable title, Don, indicated his leadership and power over the group. In 1957, the sitio of Agtabo in the barrio of Salgan was converted into a barrio. In the same year the barrio of Santa Rosa was renamed Santo Tomas Pasi then became progressive and had experienced tremendous development over the period. Because of its strategic location, Pasi became a center for trade and commerce bringing more investment opportunities to the municipality. Its high income, high population growth, and a big area of land has finally bring into the limelight and recognized as the first component city in the island of Panay. After a hard-earned endeavor, its conversion as a city was made through the signing of R.A. 8469 on the 30th day of January, 1998 by the then President of the Philippines, Pres. Fidel V. Ramos. Historical notes about Pasi Pasi was the pre-war capital of Iloilo Province in January 1942 to April 16, 1942 until the landing of Japanese occupation force. Pasi was made the quartermaster depot of United States Air Forces in Europe, USAFI, for the food of the army that resisted in Bataan through Capiz. All her building in the central school became the seat of the provincial government offices including the Agricultural and Industrial Bank and the Philippine National Bank before the Japanese landing in Panay. Pasi has the first warehouse of the Compañía General de Tabacos de Filipinas in central Panay which lately became the Roman Catholic Church and also the warehouse of the USAFI for foodstuff for Corregidor and Bataan. Ibeje Cave and Mountain Northeast of the Poblacion was the seat of the Municipal Resistance Government under Mayor Filateo Palmares and Municipal Treasurer Pedro Oro during the war years. Pasi Central Elementary School, now Pasi I Central School, had the first clean and beautiful ground in the province before the war. One of the first regional high schools established in Iloilo was in Pasi soon after liberation and one of the first to have acquired the widest site for high school of 12 hectares. Its athletic field cut from a hill and bulldozed by Mayor Palmares, leveled, improved, and beautified in time for the most lavished unit athletic meet ever held in the interior in 1949-1959. The record of Posse in holding the first provincial athletic meet in the interior before the war and in sustaining all the athletic delegations from different towns in Iloilo most abundantly and freely of which some meat uneaten were only given to them gratis et amore and some heads of cattle surplus sold for athletic fund, still unbroken up to this day, to feat that has never been or will ever be equaled in the history of athletic meets of Iloilo. In matters of bestowing the old Filipino traditional customs of being hospitable to individual visitor, visiting teams and districts, Posse's record is yet unsurpassed because sumptuous foods and drinks offered by truckloads and corridos flow like water without reservation of any kind. Posse has the biggest cattle ranch in Panay before the war because of her wide grazing land. Pasi therefore was the biggest supplier of meat for the army during the war and also the biggest supplier of rice and corn for sustenance of the guerrilla forces and the provincial guards of the civil resistance movement of Free Panay and Rimblan Governor Tomas Confessor. Pasi, through her community school program, community education and improvement is beginning to regain her lost prestige and reputation as the cleanest and most beautiful town in the interior of Iloilo or elsewhere. During Spanish regime, Pasi was very popular for being the home of wealthy families outside Iloilo City. Pasi became the first component city of Iloilo in 1998. Demographics The natives of this city are called Pasanans, with most people speaking Kinare A, together with other surrounding towns. People also speak Hiligaynon, Kapanan, Tagalog, and English as second languages. 
Language Kinaray A is the most dominant language spoken in Pasi City. English is used as the language of business and education. In addition, other local dialects such as Hiligaynon is also spoken. Some Spanish words are used accompanying the Kinaray A conversation, which is very evident among the elderly and some wealthy families and also the elder members of the micro-community of sugar plantations related families. Religion the Pasanhan people are predominantly Roman Catholic. Protestant churches also exist such as members of Philippine Independent Church or Aglipayan Church, Baptist, Presbyterian, Methodist, Adventist, and other Evangelical Christians. There are also non-Protestant and other Christian sects such as Iglesia Ni Cristo, Church of Christ of Latter-day Saints, Mormon, and Jehovah's Witnesses. Economy the physical resources of Pasi consists of relatively good soil types along rolling hills and narrow valley plains with substantial surface and ground water, with no distinct dry and wet season which is suitable for a wide range of agricultural products like rice, sugarcane, and pineapple. When the sugar industry experiences a slump due to falling sugar prices and quotas in the world market, farmers diversified into other agricultural products like corn, pineapple, mango, root crops, and other farm-based products. The city has investment potentials for agri-industrial developments. Pasi is a fourth-class component city with this year's annual income of P300,860,719 general income, P26,732,922 special educational fund, P37,287,853 trust fund, with a total current operating income of P364,881,424. Pasi City has played an important role in reaching its peak of progress. Centrally situated in the province, Pasi City is locally important as the district agri-industrial center of Iloilo with three sugar centrals. It is rich with agriculture resources that have long formed the backbone of its economy and agricultural diversification produces crops such as rice, corn, vegetables, coconut, sugarcane and pineapple. Pasi City has been an important pineapple producer for years, it has long been known for other industries including fruit processing, wallboard production, metalworking production and cut flower propagation. Its locally produced pineapple wine, jam and fruit preserves have already established captured market with its exposure to various local trade fairs and exhibits such as the annual fiesta in the city celebration during May, Tumandok in September, and Wow Philippines, the best of the region, Pasi, a component city, R.A. Number 8469 by Prez. Fidel Valdez Ramos last January 30, 1998, is bounded on the north by San Enrique, Dumarao, Capiz on the south, east by Kalinog, and Lemery on the west. Predominantly a mountainous area, it is politically divided into 51 barangays. It is about 50 kilometers from the city of Iloilo, 70 kilometers from the city of Roxas and has an area of 25,139 hectares or 251.39 square kilometers, the largest in the province. Industrial development is one of the priority concerns of the local unit being one of the five agro-industrial district in the province and the site for People's Industrial Enterprise PIES, District Agro-Industrial Center PAIC, in the 4th district. The PIES DAICs provide intermediate processing of indigenous raw materials produced in their respective influence area for final processing at the DAIC. They also manufacture finished goods cooperative advantage for such manufacturing activities would prove viable. Famous attractions in the city are the wide pineapple plantations, the cock farms, the Baroque Church of St. William the Hermit, the old Muscovado chimney, the chameleon butterfly garden, the Amarotic caves of Brigi. Magdungao, the breathtaking highway view with good sunset and the old railway bridge which needs some preservation and attention spanning the Jalor River. Recently, CCTV cameras were installed along city proper roads, national highways, public market, large establishments, hospital, bus terminal, some political subdivision boundaries, and other strategic areas due to sudden increase in crimes this 2010-2011. Banking Pasi City being the center of trade and business outside Iloilo City, several banking institutions are presently serving in the city and the surrounding municipalities. 
Shopping being the component city of Iloilo Province, Pasi serves as the major shopping destination outside the province's capital city. Gaisano Capital Pasi, so far is the first shopping mall in Pasi. It has a complete line of grocery store and department store. It has also some leased spaces which are occupied by Rose Pharmacy, Ted's La Paz Bachoy, Mr. Donuts, Goldilocks Cake, Mangai Nasal Restaurant, Parajan Deli Resto, Bonbons Pasalubong, Robinson's Bank, Big Brother Party Needs, Western Union, Jed's Barbershop, Fuji Film Photo, F&C Jewelry, Nova KTV and Amusement and other stalls. City Mall Philippines Commercial Centers Inc. is now open and is located at the front of Pasi City Bus Terminal at the Iloilo Capiz New Route. It houses some of the famous names in retail like SM Savemore, Ace Hardware, Watson's, Simply Shoes, Expressions, Jollibee, Chowking, and Mangai Nasal Food Chains, Fun Nation Game Arcade, Bizcocho House, Mr. Donuts, Oppo Phones and others. A lot of retail chain of stores had already invested in the city, some of these are, Imperial Appliance, RV Marketing, Rhine Marketing, Emcor and Day Marketing which sells appliances and furniture. Rusi, Motorstar, Emcor, Day Marketing, Motortrade, Rackle, Sim, Wheeltech, Eversure and many others, which sells motorcycles. CPT Mart which sells complete line of groceries. 24-7 convenience stores like 7-Eleven and Quicksmart. Dafa Goods Merchandising which sells complete line of cheap, low-end dry goods. Power and Energy Power distribution is facilitated by Iloilo Electric Cooperative 2 ILECO2, to Pasi City and neighboring towns such as Dueñas, San Enrique, and Kalinog. Water supply Water distribution is facilitated by Balibago Waterworks System Inc. to Pasi City proper and neighboring barangays. Communications Available communication services in Pasi are telephone services including domestic and international direct dial, mobile communications, internet, cable television, post offices and other services. There are three, three telephone service providers in Pasi providing landline connections to almost several households, offices and establishments. These are, Philippine Long Distance Telephone Company, Globe Telecom and Panay Telephone Corporation, P-A-N-T-E-L-C-O. Cellular telephone facilities are also provided by two, two cellular companies namely Smart Communications, and Globe Telecom. Television stations Pasi City is also the provider of local cable now in digital format to support HDTV standards TV service to most home, offering the same quality of the leading TV satellite at an affordable price. Milky Way Cablevision Services, Inc. MCSI offers 74 national and international television channels, plus one local channel, Milky Way Community Channel, showing local programming and talk shows. Talking Point is one of the major programs of this channel where a particular person or organization of an institution is interviewed regarding the particular matters or topics relevant to the city of Pasi. Print media Pasanhan Times, the official publication of the city of Pasi. Culture Pantados de Pasi the Pantados de Pasi Festival, in Pasi City, central of Iloilo Province, is one way of celebrating the cityhood of Pasi in March 1998. This festival is perhaps one of the best known and established festivals of the Visayan region that have evolved through the years. It has played a big part in the lives of most Pasanans. It is the most popular spectator cultural event and the most popular for the community that has a large following. Theatrical-like street dancing performances are a celebrated part of the Pantados festivity that is characterized by heavy and aggressive body movements. Here, performers adorned in traditional body tattoo with elaborate geometrical designs in their body, including their arms, legs and torso dramatizes stories in which the town's ancestral beings laid down every feature of the area, especially, their way of life. 
Characterized by heavy and aggressive body movements, the dances seem to have developed independent of any external influences, as in the combat dances, folk plays, ritual actions, or character types. Historical or cultural sources are essential materials in sustaining a festival such as theirs. The festivity changed over the years, though its cultural presentation remained popular up to this day, and has resurrected and formed part in a celebration that reflected function and transition. It also represented a major change in style and subject matter. Panay Island has a very rich cultural heritage. Dubbed as the cradle of civilization, its glorious past is diverse. Its fertile folklore has become the envy of other cultures that many have wanted to disprove them but to no avail. The island pride itself of the epic of Hinilawad and the story of ten Bornean Datus. Its imposing landscape is a good mind of narratives that were passed on from generation to generation and have been preserved in the hearts of its people. The first inhabitants of the island called it Ananape, after the name of the plant that was then abundant in the area. When the Malayans came, they named it Madia as, which was the name of the highest peak in the island. The name Panay was given only after the Spaniards came to the island. When Miguel López de Legazpi settled in Cebu, he was faced with a problem of food storage. Hidden sent his men to scour the surrounding island for food and one of the boats reached Madia as. Having found plenty of food in the place, the crew returned to Cebu and reported the news to Legazpi who exclaimed in thanksgiving Pan Hay in Este Isla, there is food on this island. The first two words eventually identified the island. But unknown to many, the first batch of Spaniards that reached the island gave a different name to it. They called it Isla de Pintados, after seeing tattooed men whom they called Pintados or painted people. The art tattooing was practiced all throughout the island. The chronicler Miguel de Lorca, in his account in Historia Pre-Hispanica de Filipinas sobre la Isla de Panay, described the Pintado practice, thus, the mean tattoo entire bodies with beautiful figures using small pieces of iron dipped in ink. This ink incorporate itself into the blood and the marks are indelible. Culturally, the inhabitants of Panay used tattoos to exhibit their record in battle. The more tattoo marks a man had on his body, the higher his status as a warrior. The elegance of the Pintado practice has raised tattooing into the level of art. They do then with such order, symmetry, and coordination that they elicit admiration from those who see them. While the men put tattoo all over their body, it was a rule in the old Panay society that women only wear tattoos on one side of their arms. According to one account, while a group of Spaniards who had settled in Kalinog went downstream of the Jalor River and anchored in a place called Ansig, they saw a tattooed woman who was winnowing pounded Pele. One of them asked her what the name of the place is. The woman, who did not understand Spanish, thought that the man was asking what she was doing and replied, Naga Pangpazi, which means peeking out unhusked rice from pounded Pele. From then on, the Spaniards called the place Posse, which later involved into Posse. As the Spaniards began to Christianize the inhabitants of Panay, the friars believed the tattooing was a pagan practice and forced the natives to abandon the art, thus resulting to the disappearance of the Pintado culture. However, the practice did not escape the eyes of historians who recorded it with respect and veneration that this form of art deserved. For many, it was a practice that ought not only to be preserved but also to be revived in some other ways to highlight the fact that during the pre-Spanish era, an advanced civilization of artistic people had already flourished in this part of the archipelago. It is in this context that Posse, one of the earliest Malayan settlement in the island, embarks on this project to showcase and revive one of Panay's rich cultural legacies from its ancestors. Image tourism through this cultural celebration brings thousands of local and international visitors interested to know the city's rich history, considerable scenic beauty, and a number tourism attraction. The Pasenhan 2000 Incorporated devotes their efforts of promoting the festival in the local and national scene. These efforts focus on the cultural festivity, at least in the early promotional stage, is the best way to keep it alive, and a variety of innovative efforts are underway to do just that. Aside from having its own festival, Posse City also joins as a competing tribe at the Kasadiahan during Iloilo Dinagayang Festival. Last 2005, Pantados de Posse was hailed as champion during the said event. 
The said tribe represented the Iloilo province during the 2005 Aliwan Festival in Manila. Again, Pasi was hailed as the overall champion. After garnering those awards, the city announced that they will no longer join as a competing tribe during Dinagayang and that they will become a fully independent festival. The year, 2008 marks the 10th foundation anniversary. Pinta Lawas body painting, as well as Carabao, water buffalo, painting contests are being practiced followed by Carosa Parada, carriage parade that is drawn by a painted Carabao, Binabining Pintados, 1998 to 2016, Mr. Posse, a new pageant starting 2017 that replaces Binabining Pintados, a boat and bicycle racing events, Sanadia Sa Suba, fun in the river, and a tribal dancing competition. Christmas in the city Christmas in the city is held every middle of December until the first Sunday of January in the next year at Plaza Paloma. During its opening day it had a grand fireworks display, followed by the opening of lights, and food stalls. Trees and other structures in the plaza are designed with colorful lights. Lamp posts are also illuminated with designs. It is a must-visit for food enthusiasts as lechon, liempo, inasal na manic and other meat barbecue are served at the food stalls. Drinks are also served. Food stalls for children are also available like popcorn, cotton candy, pancakes, and others. Every night there are presentations held at the middle of the plaza by different institutions or probably a live band playing to add entertainment to already lively environment. Kapistahan Pasi City celebrates the feast of its patron saint, San Guillermo de Ermita, Street. William the Hermit, on 10 February along with the coronation of the Fiesta Queen. Mostly the activities are already starting one week before. There will be street parades in the morning. Programs are held every night in the plaza sponsored by different institutions and there will be dancing afterwards. Carnivals and rides in the plaza are available for the public and small store kiosk are open to sell different items like clothing, jewelry, home designs, etc. It is one of the most anticipated festival in the city. St. William the Hermit Parish Church This is considered a militaristic church in that it was planned as a fortress church and the proof of this can be seen in the massive buttresses which support the front and back walls of the church. The church was built to replace churches that had been destroyed by an earthquake in 1612 and subsequent churches that had been destroyed by fires. In 1856 Friar Pedro Sibirio restored the church that had fallen into disrepair and what we see today is the result of his work. As is usual in churches of this vintage that can immediately discern that it was built, once again, by the Augustinians since their seal appears in the archway over one of the side entrances. It is said that the historical record is vague on the topic of entrances that indicates that historians are not certain as to where the actual main entrance was placed by the original builders. It appears that it may well have been this doorway on the southeast corner of the church at the entrance of the Garden of Saints. All was well with the church through the Revolution and the Philippines-American War but in 1932 the roof was blown away by a typhoon. The church is surrounded by a Garden of the Saints which contains 25 to 30 statues of saints that have been placed in the garden by parishioners over the years. Perhaps the most striking feature of the entire church is the sanctuary, which when is light up is both dramatically breathtaking and simply beautiful. Inside the very tall belfry of the church are the three bells, two of which are massive ones and the other one is a small one. To ring the large one, they need to step on the chain that is attached to the bell's clapper to make it hit the sound rim. The harder it is stepped on it the louder would the sound be. The two other bells are rung manually. They have to hold the two clappers together and hit them to the sound rim to make them work. This makes the bell ringer so close to the bells when ringing them. Discovery and Foundation The discovery of Posse, at the same time its foundation as a mission parish by the Spanish explorers for Panay Island occurred in 1584. It was placed under the patronage of St. William whose feast had since then been celebrated every February 10. In 1593, Padre Juan Vilamayor, an Augustinian friar, became its first resident priest. The first mission church was made out of light materials and located near the riverbank of Jalor River. 
In 1600 the church was transferred from the old site to its present location. The foundation and the walls were made of stones, slabs and lime. The parishioners were made to carry the needed materials every time they went to the church. The construction was finished during the time of Padre Pedro Sibirio when Salvador Badong Paines Perfecto was the captain of the town. Schism and Abacaround 1821 During the time of Padre Apolinario Villanueva, schism ensued between him as parish priest and the Spanish populace of the town. He transferred the seat of the parish church to Abacá where he constructed a chapel. When Padre Martin succeeded him, the seat of the parish church was returned to Pasi. Aglipayan Revolution With the concurring Filipino revolution against the Spanish government, there was a clamor of the Filipino clergy for reforms. Padre Rafael Murillo, the parish priest then was a good follower and supporter of the Aglipay. He was elevated to the rank of an Aglipayan bishop not long brought with him his family. To support his family, he demanded tributes from the people. The Pasanans under Captain Badong Perfecto strongly objected and Padre Joaquin was removed not long after. Spanish era to post-war years Padre Lorenzo Diaz, a Catholic Augustinian priest administered the parish. The year 1891 saw the last Spanish Augustinian parish priest of Pasi in Padre Bravo. Reverend Father Amado Paines Perfectuan 1893, after three centuries of Christianization, Pasi was able to produce its first priest, Padre Amado Paines Perfecto. He studied in the University of Salamanca in Spain and graduated a doctor of canon law, which at that time was a rare privilege. He was appointed the first Filipino priest of Pasi. He constructed the most beautiful convent in the diocese furnished with carved furniture and imported chinaware and utensils. One of his remaining masterpieces is the Flores de Mayo Sav, which has become part of the tradition of the town. World War E World War II was conflagration for the Pasanans. Fire gluttered all the Spanish-built houses of the town. The guerrillas burned all the buildings leaving the town empty for the occupying Japanese. Nothing was left of the wooden structure of both church and convent but the stones. The church was made the garrison of the Japanese forces and later the headquarters of the resident civil government. Filipino troops under the Philippine Commonwealth Army and Philippine Constabulary were liberated in Pasi and helped the local guerrilla groups by attacking Japanese troops and ended in World War II. Lady KK Earthquake The 1948 Lady KK Earthquake occurred on January 25, 1948 at Inpane Island, Philippines. The Belt Tower did not survive the harshness of the earthquake. The tall tower was wrecked, making the entire bells fell down to the ground. No damage was found except for the other massive bell, which had a very slight crack on it. The church from then and now Reconstruction The reconstruction of the church took a gradual development. The wood and nipa roofing of the church was constructed during the time of Padre Pereñas. Wooden posts were placed at the eastern side of the church as temporary area to place the bells, since the bell tower was damaged during the 1948 earthquake. When Padre Buenaflor took over, he had the roof changed into galvanized iron. The improvement of the altar which was transferred by Padre Pereñas to the main entrance of the church was done during the time of Padre Castaño. The present church with its steel trusses, washed walls, benches, and a new but permanent belfry, together with the old parish convent already demolished, the Assumption School and the former social hall, were all constructed as projects of Monsignor. Eligio Villavert, the 81st parish priest of Pasi. Final restoration and renovation It was 1997 when the parish of St. William was graced with another Pasanhan priest. Monsignor. Felipe de Tivo Palomo, P.C., fully supported by the parish councils and the Pasanhan parishioners both local and abroad decided to venture into ambitious but necessary projects. In the year 2000, the completion and the blessing of the Jubilee Hall, the largest and tallest parish convent in the whole diocese was witnessed. After the completion, behind the church, the attention of the parishioners and Monsignor Palomo were directed to the uncompleted church. The main entrance is nowhere to be found, making Posse Church one of its kind. The landscaping of the western side of the church and the installation of the statues of the saints took place. 
The altar was transferred to its original place, to give way to the restoration of its original main entrance. The altar has been beautifully restored according to the Augustinians' original architectural design. The ornate granite flooring, echo-proof ceiling, decorative stained glasses, a huge steel door at the main entrance and modern lighting facilities were installed. On the eastern side, one can see the Avenida de la Virgen Maria, the Adoration Chapel, parking area, and the very huge relief map of Pasi City. In October 26, 2010, the Church of St. William the Hermit had its solemn dedication, an annual festivity which the parishioners will celebrate to continue recalling the extra graciousness God has abundantly bestowed in the Christian community of Pasi. Typhoon Yolanda on November 8, 2013, signal number 4 Typhoon Yolanda, also known internationally as Typhoon Haiyan, hit the Visayas region, causing serious damages to the infrastructure, including the church. The church, three years after it is restored was partially damaged. The ceiling outside the church and into the altar collapsed. The church was temporarily closed and masses are temporarily held at the Jubilee Hall. However, it was opened again to the public on December 16, 2013 after the massive reconstruction and repair. Infrastructure and Tourism Posse City has several landmarks that symbolizes its rich history and culture over the years. The city is renowned for its natural ecological beauty and diversity, which is very evident from its rich mountain ranges and beautiful caves. Its historical significance in the Second World War also contributed much in the history of Iloilo Province as well. It offers a lot of place to satisfy your stomach development. It has also places where you can spend your time leisurely or maybe just relax and take a rest. Places to see F. Palmer Sr. Street it is also known as the Calle Real of Posse since it was the busiest business hub of the city until now. This street is an old national highway when going to the province of Capiz or Aklan. At present, it is used as an alternative national road going to Iloilo Airport. The new city hall of Posse City built in 1995 as a new municipal hall, but in 1998, it is redesigned to become the new city hall. It is located at Corner Monfort Avenue Casamayor Street. The old municipal held municipal hall was built in 1930 and it is one of the only surviving pre-war infrastructures in Posse. Presently, it houses the Office of the Department of Agrarian Reform, DAR, Commission on Elections, Comelec, Post Office, and Conference Hall. The old municipal hall is sometimes known as Residencia Posse, Street. William the Hermit Parish Church Convent The largest and tallest parish convent in the whole archdiocese has two reception halls, Jubilee Hall and Lamunan Hall, that can be used in various occasions such as wedding reception, Plaza Palomolicated just in front of the old municipal hall. The large pineapple restroom is one of the most attractive feature of the said park. The park also has a multi-purpose sporting court for the people who want to do recreational activities such as playing badminton, tennis and others. Paseo de Pasa just few meters away from Plaza Paloma, is a brick-floored paseo that is a perfect place for people who are fond of doing fitness exercises. Pasi City Public Market The new public market of Pasi is the largest in the whole Iloilo Province, Old Jalor Railway Bridge also known as Watanabe Terror Bridge, it is one of the fewest railroad bridges left in the whole Panay. It is one of the major landmarks of Posse that needs further preservation. Muscovado Chimney The Muscovado Chimney of Posse Sugar Central is the largest and tallest in the whole Panay Island. Eat, stay and leisure The past decade saw an influx of inland resorts, which became a hit among Pasanhan tourists. The inland resorts in the city are the following Kawilahan Family Resort at Brigi. Bakurainan, Midway Fresh Market and Restaurant at Brigi. Bakurainan, Spring Garden Therapeutic Family Resort at Brigi. Sablagon, Pantado's Pension House at Brigi. Sablagon, Erlina's Place and Resort at Brigi. Ansig Jines Viejo, Kalingawan Inland Resort at Brigi. Punong and Christine's Place Inland Resort and Hotel at Simeon Aguilar Street Restaurants are also present in the city. Among the famous dining destinations are Midway Fresh Market and Restaurant at Brigi. Bakurainan, Eddie's Garden and the House of Bashao Talaba, Barlin's Eatery and Noinitz Talabahan at Brigi. Sablagon, Garden Pavilion Hotel, Trace Ejo's Restaurant, Teradal Restaurant, Kenkins Talabahan, Lays and Lynn Resto Bar and Casina at Simeon Aguilar Street, Eviela Restaurant at A. Payne's Street and others. Fast food restaurants and coffeehouses are also available in the area.
These are Mangai Nasal, Ted's Old Timer La Paz Bachoy, Mr. Donut and Parajan Deli inside Gaisano Capital at Simeon Aguilar Street, Jollibee, Chowking and Mangai Nasal inside City Mall at Simeon Aguilar Street, Coffee Break at F. Palmer Street, Jollibee at F. Palmer Street, Cafe Melinda and Alberto's Pizza at Simeon Aguilar Street, Three Kids Snack House at A. Payne Street and a lot more. There are a variety of hotels, pension houses, and inns to offer good night sleep for everybody. Among them are Kawilahan Family Resort at Brigi. Bakuranan, Pantado's Pension House at Brigi. Sablagon, Garden Pavilion Hotel and Christine's Place Inland Resort and Hotel at Simeon Aguilar Street, and Ouser Drive-In Pension House at Brigi. Gines Viejo The city nightlife is also alive. You can check this places for drinks, live bands, music and dancing, but only on selected nights and weekends. Christine's Place Resto Bar at Simeon Aguilar Street, and Trace Ejo's Restaurant at Simeon Aguilar Street. Health and Social Services The city of Posse in its goal to have a healthy environment and thereby realized a healthy community has intensified its health and social programs and activities. Consequently, it has improved the health situation and public services of the entire populace through government services and non-government organizations. Don Valerio Palmer Sr. Memorial District Hospital The only public medical center in downtown Posse. Salgan Rural Hospital in October, 2013, the inauguration of the Extension Hospital in Brigi. Salgan took place. The hospital will help residents who live very far away from the city proper in giving necessary medical attentions and first aid. Other private health institutions Medicus Posse, Fronthub Medilab and Clinics, and other privately owned clinics which also offer high-quality health services. Philippine Red Cross Posse City is the new regional operations center of the Philippine Red Cross as well as its new logistics and disaster management training center. The center was inaugurated on April 21, 2017 by several officials of the PRC led by PRC Chairman Richard Gordon as well as the Secretary General of Korea National Red Cross Gun Jong Kim and the head of delegation of the International Federation of Red Cross and Red Crescent Societies Kerry Isoma in the presence of Arthur D. Defensor Sr., Governor of the Province of Iloilo, Jezri Palmares, Mayor of Posse City, Ferginel Byron, Representative of the 4th District of Iloilo, and Marlon Convict. Car, Department of Health Regional Director. Chameleon Association, Inc. Founded in 1997 by French national Laurence Ligier, Chameleon Association, Inc. CHI, is a non-stock, non-profit and non-government organization that provides holistic and comprehensive rehabilitation to girl survivors of sexual abuse in Western Visayas. Likewise, CHI provides educational assistance to underprivileged but deserving children in our neighboring communities in Posse, San Enrique and Bingawan through its sponsorship program. The said organization is located in Brigi. Sablagon, Posse City. The Chameleon Association has branches in Paris, Luxembourg, and Switzerland and contacts in Belgium and Andorra. Chameleon aims to give children and their families access to education and training, and support medically, morally, legally, and financially so as to help them have honorable and successful living conditions in the long term. The association has also put in place a prevention program for the protection and training to reintegrate these children back into society and give them an everlasting survival strategy. The Chameleon Association has an integrated approach and multiple programs to support and protect the children from the region. Their rehabilitation program handles young girls who are victims of sexual abuse in two stages, a three-year residential program and a post-residential program for rehabilitation. The Community Development Program supports the studies of children who are victims of great poverty. This organization has also implemented programs for health, the defense of children's rights, and income-generating projects. 
The Chameleon Association creates long-lasting relationships between the children and their sponsors through the exchange of letters, drawings, photographs, report cards, and small gifts. Chameleon gives back to these children part of their innocence and helps them to fulfill their dreams of going to school and having a future. Sports Posse City Athletic Field was currently under construction beside Posse City College at Brigi. Bakuranan. It is expected to be finished by 2018. Posse City Gymnasium is now open last May 2018. Posse City Center Fitness and Wellness located at Brigi. Sablagon is a gym and fitness center for health enthusiasts. Posse City Center is also a location for cockfights events which happen during city occasions and selected days. Every summer they held the Mayor Jezri T. Palmer's Summer Olympics which started on the year 2014. Sports played are basketball, volleyball, table tennis, lawn tennis, badminton, taekwondo, soccer, chess and fun run. Due to success of youngest member of the Philippine team at six years old Ruslan Pamplona, the city has opened the Posse City Chess Center located at Posse Public Market last June 8, 2017. They also have the TAPC or Taekwondo Association of Posse City, which also earned a lot of wins during the Regional Taekwondo Championship held at INHS last May 2017. Education College Posse City College – Courses offered Diploma Posse Trade School – TESDA High School Posse National High School – Senior High – Grade 7 to 10 Assumption School – Senior High – Grade 7 to 10 – Grade 1 to 6 – Prep School Academia de San Guillermo High School, Senior High, Grade 7 to 10, Grade 1 to 6, Prep School. Posse Montessori High School, Grade 7 to 10, Grade 1 to 6, Prep School. Man, it integrated school, Grade 7 to 10, Grade 1 to 6, Prep School. Elementary. Creative Minds International Academy of Posse, Grade 1 to 6, Prep School. St. Alphonsa School of Posse, Grade 1 to 6, Prep School. Posse I Central School, Grade 1 to 6, Kinder School. Kinder. Posse Bethel Christian Academy, Kinder School. Posse Baptist Church, Kinder School. Transportation The city can be reached by bus, although some people can take it by taxi from Iloilo City. Tricycle and jeepney are the major means of transportation within Posse. Plane from Manila, one can take direct flights to Iloilo. Flying time approximately takes 45 minutes. From Cebu, Iloilo is even nearer, a mere 30 minutes away. From the Iloilo International Airport you can either take a taxi or rent a van and go directly to Posse City or you can go to bus terminals in Jaro, Iloilo for a bus ride. Boat, Shipone can also take the longer but infinitely more exciting ferry trips from the North Harbor in Manila aboard a ship. A ferry trip to Iloilo City usually takes 24 hours to reach Iloilo Seaport. One can take a cab to the bus terminal located at Jaro, Iloilo City and get on a bus to Posse City, if from Bacolod, you can take a fast craft to Iloilo Port. The trip usually takes 45 minutes. Then take a cab to the bus terminal located at Jaro, Iloilo City. Ruro Posse City can also be reached from Manila for 18 hours or more via the new Iloilo Capiz Highway on Aurora Bus. You take the bus going to Iloilo and ask if it will pass Posse City, because others Roro bus take a different route when going to Iloilo City. Bus Posse City can be reached by riding a series bus, either a regular one or air-conditioned, from series terminal in Jaro, Iloilo City with destination labels such as Calibo, Roxas, Cataclan, and Posse. 
If from Roxas City, Calibo and Cataclan, you can ride series bus with label Iloilo. These buses always take a stopover at the bus terminal complex at Pasi City. CIBLA, Central Iloilo Bus Line Association buses are also available, and usually their destination labels are Pasi, they are parked at Tagback Terminal in Jaro, Iloilo City, Taxitaxis traveling around Iloilo City can be used in reaching Pasi City, jeepney neighboring towns such as Kalinog and San Rafael can take a jeepney ride to reach Pasi. Several barangays in Pasi City make use of jeepney as their mode of transportation. Tricycle towns of San Enrique and Dueñas usually make use of tricycle in traveling to Pasi. A typical city proper tricycle has an open front, four seaters, back passengers facing backwards, and the front ones faces in front. There are also tricycles that are equipped with sound system with portable MP3 players, sidecars with stylish sports car looking side wheels, neon lights, automobile like headlamps on the sidecar, and other various accessories. A very few of these tricycles have even laptop computers on it, as shown during the 2010 Pintados de Posse car, motorbike and tricycle show at Posse City Social Hall. Most barangays of Posse take a ride in tricycle when traveling to and from the city proper. Color codes are assigned from each barangay tricycles for easier familiarity. Local government Mayor, Jezri T. Palmares Vice Mayor, Bonifacio Barbero Congressman, Hernan Byron Jr. City Councilors Melinda Chavez Horace Paines Jovi. Bitoy. Paul Mares. Jason Padilla. Baltazar. Cap Basan. Panizales. Senanito. Nitoy. Pama. Cornelio. Motsoy. Tees. Nefisa. Nefi. Paspi Pantan. June June Sumig Pauks Officio Councilors Paula Jean Palma, SK President Cornelio Teves, ABC President Notable people Call. Alberto Perlas, his contribution during the Second World War made him become the local hero of Posse. A street along the riverside, Alberto Perla Street, and a monument in front of Plaza Paloma is dedicated to his heroism. Alexander Pama, flag officer in command, Philippine Navy. Jose S. Palma, the present Archbishop of Cebu and President of Catholic Bishops Conference of the Philippines. Ransom S. Perot, he was awarded as Bagong Bayani by Bagong Bayani Foundation, POEA, Dole at Heroes Hall, Malacanang, Manila on June 2003. References External links Philippine Standard Geographic Code Philippine Census Information Local Governance Performance Management System